So Catherine Garvey in 1977 defined pretend play as behavior in a simulative as if mode. And she said, you can tell that a child is pretending based on these three hallmarks, decentration, decontextualization, and integration. Decentration means I am not myself, I'm somebody else. Decontextualization means this looks like a spoon, but it's not really a spoon, it's actually a microphone. And integration has to do with the sequences of events that you would expect in typical scripts. Now, pretend play begins as solitary pretense, all by myself, with the first words, so that at the emergence of single words, kids are also performing single schemes in pretend play, like feeding a baby. When the child moves into two-word utterances, they start to combine two schemes. So now maybe they would feed the baby something to eat and then feed her something to drink. And ultimately, these develop into more elaborate plans and sequences that by two and a half or three start to include others as active players. And you can imagine, once you get somebody else involved, things get complicated. The research shows that there's a developmental relationship between pretend play and literacy. So obviously, the narratives, the oral narratives, are going to be related to what ultimately becomes stories, that during pretend play, we can use literacy artifacts. For example, we can go to an eye doctor and have to read an eye chart. We can take your temperature and have to read the numbers. In social emotional development, we're learning to take another person's perspective through pretend play. We're learning to cooperate, take turns, and have empathy. And finally, in cognition, we're learning during pretend play how to negotiate, improvise, be creative, and plan jointly.